Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and make a start, please. This is our last, sex, our last session of the afternoon, and it's great to see everybody here. I know people are running for trains, so we're just going to go straight away. It's a very important session, it's all about staffing our services, and obviously all the wonderful things that we want to do in our libraries, we cannot do without our staff and uh, our skills and expertise. So I'm going to hand over now to Deborah. Deborah McCann. Hi. Um, so this is the last session, and thanks for staying to listen to me talk about using non-core staff for core services. Most academic libraries could not function or provide extended, extended hours without the help of students. What might be different about UCD is not that we use students, but the extent we do and the variety of roles which they provide. We use student workers across all our sites and have a number of different rotors to cover various functions. We even try to complement our rotors with tasks so that we can swap the students around where needed. First and foremost are the library's needs and requirements. Areas which students work in UCD include shelving and assisting with directional queries, service desks, orientation, collections, facilities, security, and library conferences. Stringent budget cuts, staff retirements, recruitment constraints imposed by the employment control framework. Oh, back, sorry. Bad. <laughs> All combined to threaten UCD's li library's capacity to continue uninterrupted core service. Given the overall decrease in staffing levels, we identified student workers as the way forward. So we sent a target email to all our postgraduate students, and we received over 400 replies. We interviewed 47, and we offered 22 contracts. The selection process was based on previous experience in libraries, retail or stock management. As part of the application process, we asked the interviewees to provide us with timetables so that we could match their free time to our needs. This assisted with the shortlisting short process. But a 15 minute interview is a short time to identify, will this person get along with other library staff and library users? Will they be dependable? Will they understand the library's values and principles? Will students be able to provide peer-to-peer -peer support to other students? But once the interviews were completed, contracts were signed, and then it was on to training. There could be a temptation to just to let the students begin and learn on the job, but that's unfair. And you also end up spending time on doing bad work habits. So for the first time in our library, we developed a training manual specifically for our student workers. We organized a training morning for all students and had presentations from a number of different units in the library. Students who were assigned to desks and collections were trained on our LMS and circulation systems. We had a student who had previously worked the for, for, previous year come back and talk to the group about her experiences. It's no secret that much of the work students perform is both repetitive and monotonous, but it is essential in meeting the needs of the library operation. So it's important to contextualise by explaining the library's organisational chart and how their role plays a vital part in providing a quality library service. I believe that it is essential to press upon the student workers the value of the job they are doing. If student workers are valuable to the library, then they should be treated as such. Work will not always be the student's first priority, so you need to get them to move it up their list of priorities. Students may need guidance about their behaviour, attire, and even their use of language. Um, we had one student at the desk who is a really nice guy, but he's a terrible habit of using the word Jesus in every sentence. <laughs> and, 
after I had um, an irate elder gentleman ring me the following day, I had to speak to him. And the second I said it to him, it was like a light bulb moment for him. He just realised that like he shouldn't be using it in such a fashion. And that was the end of it. It was just perfect. And he is one of our best student workers. Um, Explaining what is required by an institution such as UCD in order to be paid takes quite a bit of time. Answering questions about tax, about bank details for non-Irish workers, and how to get a Garden National Immigration Bureau card, you quickly become an expert. It's important to get them to work as a team because if students are more comfortable with each other, the tasks are more easily shared, cooperation is more natural, and their success as a team is more likely. Creating a rota that works for students and the library that combines multiple tasks mm -hmm. takes numerous attempts, and you need to have patience and staying power. UCD <coughs> online pay claim forms where the student completes the form and sends it to me and then I pass it on to library finance for approval. In April I processed 22 forms. I rejected eight of them as they had the wrong number of hours worked and I had to email six students to remind them to submit their pay form otherwise they wouldn't be paid. We pay different rates of pay depending on the work that the students do. Um, so students who shall receive one way to pay and students who do more detailed tasks such as uh, collections or facilities or desk work, they receive a different way to pay. We have students from five different nationalities working together. Um, we have three American students and um, Quickly, it became clear that the American students had a different concept of student work than what we had envisaged. And they explained to me that they had worked in undergraduate libraries in the States, and that once the tasks were complete, um, then they were free to sit down and study. But like that, I had to explain it wasn't how we had envisaged it was worked. <laughs> Some students were kind of forthright in the request of what the library could do for them, and we had requests from students to have a particular student to have a, a, com a focus group for a commercial company in the library, and also from another one to hold um, their tutorials in a library. So you really do have to kind of lay down the rules a bit from the beginning. Um, I did find this particular group were more relaxed about administrations and deadlines than others. After three emails and two phone calls to one of the students to ask him to complete his online pay claim form, he sent me an email saying, Deborah, do not worry. If I do not get paid, it does not matter. It is not a problem for me. <laughs> and this happened more than once. On our training day, we said that we would communicate with, with our students through email, and we did try to stick to this, but it's clear that sometimes they could be selective in replying to emails, and sometimes you'd need to either text or ring them if you needed an answer quickly. For such digital natives, I think that communication is often one-way traffic. Interestingly, we did a survey with our students before they left and asked how we could improve upon our communications. They said there wasn't a problem with communication, but they did suggest that we could either use a WhatsApp or Facebook group. But whatever method of communication you do use, it is important because the message needs to be received and understood. A survey was carried out at the end of the academic year to gather feedback from the students as how they found their experience of working in an academic library. We sent out two different surveys, one general survey to all the students, workers, and one more specific survey to the staff who worked in other areas. In total, 28 surveys were sent out. We had 19 replies. The results were interesting, and things we thought we were doing well, such as including the students in library activities, came in for some criticism. And one student said that they felt they could have done with a pat on the back every now and again. We asked questions about library services and how they would suggest we could improve them. 
overall, the results were encouraging, and we will be using these in advancing how we proceed in furthering the role of the student worker. Our goal throughout this year was to distill what we wanted the qualities of our student workers to be, so that the students would succeed in their task in the library. The development of any library's student staff is an ongoing process that requires dedication, time, energy, creativity and commitment. In UCD Library, we have seen the opportunities and rewards for investing in student workers as significant and well worth the time spent. The students can be empowered to provide needed services in, is in the library while increasing their own skill set. Overall, I believe that the role of the student worker was very much a learning curve for the library as well as for the students themselves. There is much we can take from this and improve on our approach in the next academic year. Thank you.